Hello students, today I will talk about the androgens, male sex hormones. There are two categories uh, of uh, androgens are there, one which are naturally produced called natural androgens and which are synthesized uh, outside that we call synthetic androgens. Natural androgens we have uh, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, dehydroepiandroesterone and androestinidione. In the category synthetic androgens uh, we have uh, methyl testosterone and fluoxymesterone, testosterone and deconate. You can see the structural difference between the testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone which is a metabolite of testosterone. In the coming slides, a uh, few slides uh, we will discuss about the functions of the testis, uh, androgens and anabolic steroids. Uh, anti-androgens and uh, male contraception. Uh, so in the male as well as in female the adrenal cortex uh, secretes the small amount of uh, androgens. The major androgen secreted by adrenal gland is uh, dihydroepiandroesterone. <coughs> In males, the androgen testosterone is also released in much greater quantity by the testes. And the testes uh, is like a ovary. Uh, already in the female sex hormone, you have seen what the ovary does. So, here uh, testes is uh, similarly acting like a ovary and has both gametogenic as well as endocrine functions. Now we will see the main androgen that is testosterone. LH stimulates leading cell. Just to understand how the uh, hormones which you have studied in female sex hormone category and uh, in the male sex hormone category, we read it in different chapters and we find these hormones in the abundance in different sexes but in body they are not as different they are having very uh, close physiological relationship so lh uh, which is a main hormone uh, in the female reproductive cycle stimulates leading cell right so leading cell which are present in the testes which are located between seminiferous tubules to secrete the hormone testosterone. So, LH is actually stimulating the leading cell to produce the testosterone. Lip, uh, it is a lipid soluble and readily diffuses out of leading cell into the interstitial fluid and then into the blood. So, from leading cell it comes out and diffuses into interstitial fluid and then goes into blood. In some target cells, uh, for example, uh, as in external genitals and prostate, there is a 5 alpha reductase. This is a very important uh, point for you here. The 5 alpha reductase. So, this 5 alpha reductase, which is a very, very important uh, enzyme, is going to convert this testosterone into the dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone. And dihydrotestosterone is itself is an active androgen. Okay, so there are uh, different uh, uh, tissues are using the different uh, testosterone. Some are using testosterone as such. Some are using it as in DHT form. DHT stimulates development of the urethra. What these even the testosterone converts into DHT? What it does? It in utilizes into or involves into the development of urethra, prostate and external genitals.
Now uh, we'll see uh, all these points uh, in few slides as a summary. Then we'll move on to the pharmacology of testosterone. The onset of uh, gametogenic functions of the testes is controlled largely by the secretion of FSH by the pituitary. Now I'm talking about the gametogenic functions of testes. Right? Means testes, the production of a sperm by the testes is a gametogenic function. You can say. And that is controlled by the FSH, right? FSH, which is again a very important uh, female uh, sex hormone. But here FSH means follicular stimulating hormone. At puberty, GnRH stimulates anterior pituitary secretion of FSH and LH. Now you understand how this all happens during the pituitary GnRH uh, releases and stimulates the secretion of FSH and LH. You know GnRH released from uh, hypothalamus then it releases, uh, it stimulates the release of FSH and LH from anterior pituitary. LH stimulates production of testosterone. Now this LH we already discussed, it stimulates the production of testosterone, FSH and testosterone stimulate spermatogenesis. So testosterone is nothing or cannot do anything without the LH and FSH. Sertoli cells secrete androgen binding protein here ABP secreted by Sertoli cells right which binds to testosterone and keeps its concentration high in the seminiferous tubule. So ABPs are those uh, which uh, keep this uh, testosterone bind with them and uh, uh, keep their concentration alive. What testosterone does for uh, male as well as in female development and uh, growth development and maintenance of sex organs stimulates bone growth, protein anabolism, sperm maturation and stimulates development of masculine secondary sex characteristics. Inhibin is produced by Sertoli cells. You remember this inhibin was also there into the uh, reproductive cycle of uh, female sex hormones. So, inhibin's job is to control these main hormones, either estrogen, progesterone, or by or the testosterone here. So, it produces from the Sertoli cells. Its inhibition of FSH helps regulate the rate of spermatogenesis. So, inhibin controls FSH. Actually, FSH controls the uh, testosterone for spermatogenesis. So, when the FSH get controlled, then spermatogenesis also get controlled. So, you can see. Uh, how complex it is that uh, spermatogenesis is not controlled by testosterone but it is controlled by FSH because FSH controls the testosterone. In men, approximately 8 milligram of testosterone is produced daily, about 95 percent is produced by the leading cell and only 5 percent of the adenines. So as uh, already told you that uh, test is uh, also producing some other androgens uh, for example dihydrotestosterone uh, this is a uh, second uh, uh, maximum after testosterone and then we have some weak uh, androgens as well androstenedione and dihydroep androsterone. Other than that pregenolone and progesterone and their 17 hydroxylated derivatives are also released in small amounts. Plasma level of testosterone in males are about 0.6 mcg at puberty and after the age of 50 it goes decline uh, while in female it is 0 0.03 mcg and uh, in female it is been produced by ovaries as well as the adrenal glands and also by the peripheral conversion of some, some hormones. So like that female also get the some amount of testosterone. This is the uh, mechanism by which you can understand how the estrogen, progesterone and testosterone have been synthesized from the same mechanism. So here the cholesterol, uh, I will show you another uh, diagram which gives you even more clearer picture of it.
So, uh, in this you can understand that uh, how the cholesterol is, this is the, you can see the blue, green and orange line, orange uh, sections are showing you the adrenal cortex region. There are three different uh, layers, zona glomerulosa, fasciculata and reticularis. So, these three different layers, these three different uh, mineralocorticoid, glucocorticoid and androgens are produced. After that, uh, this goes into the peripheral tissues where the uh, conversion into the DHT and estrogen happens. So, it is a very important uh, and a very good uh, flow chart to explain you all this. You can see the cholesterol uh, converts into progesterone, progest then progesterone, then alpha dihydroxy, deoxycorticosterone, corticosterone, aldosterone, like that it goes into the mineralocorticoid category. Afterwards, uh, the prisnenolone and progesterone get converted into the 17 hydroxy prisnenolone and 17 hydroxy progesterone. And that goes uh, uh, and gives the production cortisol. So, this is uh, cort glucocorticoid uh, hormonal category. Third category where the uh, 17 hydroxy prisnenolone converts into dehydroepiandrosterone, right? And uh, same way, 17 hydroxy progesterone also converts into androestinidione. So, like that, uh, you can understand here the conversion. It conversion. Uh, there is a conversion of uh, testosterone here, and uh, testosterone. Uh, uh, when the testosterone forms here, this testosterone, uh, now the endosteinidione as well as this testosterone, it goes into the uh, peripheral tissues. So, when it goes into the peripheral tissues here, endosteinidione in the presence of aromatase enzyme converts into the estron, right. And the 17 hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase enzyme converts this estron into estradiol, okay. And uh, this testosterone uh, in the presence of 5 alpha reductase, a very, very important enzyme, converts into dihydrotestosterone. So, like that, this DHT as well as the other estrogen, like estrone and estradiol, has been produced into the peripheral tissues uh, by this mechanism. So, you can understand the first uh, production is the uh, progesterones and then progesterone gives you the testosterones then testosterone converts into the estrogen like that a very crotchetted mechanism is here so i hope you understood this now we'll see uh, what are the actions uh, the testosterones or the androgens are producing Usually, uh, secondary sex characters and the sex organ production or the growth and development uh, has been taken care of. These are called as androgenic actions. Uh, other than that, growth of genitals like uh, penis, scrotum, seminal vesicle, prostate, they are taken care of. Other than that, they take care of the growth of hair, pubic, axillary, beard, mustaches, body hair and male pattern of its distribution. You see, the, the hairs on the head or the skull has been not uh, uh, been growing because of this, but beard is growing because of that. That is why it has been considered those who have the good beard will not be having good hairs. Thickening of skin which becomes greasy due to proliferation and increased activity of sebaceous glands especially on the face frequently the duct gets blocked, infection occurs resulting in acne. So, acne is also the production of these androgens. Uh, also, larynx grows and voice deepens. Behavioral effects a, are increased physical vigor, aggressiveness, penile erections. Male libido appears to be activated by testosterone directly as well as by the estradiol produces from testosterone. 
and testosterone is also important for the intrauterine movements. Testis, a uh, little bit about the testis, uh, moderately large dose cause uh, testicular atrophy by inhibiting GN secretion from pituitary. Testosterone is needed for normal spermatogenesis and maturation of spermatozoa. High concentration of testosterone attained locally in the spermatogenic tubules by diffusion from the neighboring leading cells stimulates spermatogenesis. This is what the testis does. So, this, uh, this is the uh, role of testosterone on testis. Now, we will see the role of or action of testosterone on skeletal, skeleton and skeletal muscles. These are anabolic effects. So, here you can find the rapid uh, bone growth both in thickness as well as in length. Here is a very important point keep in mind after puberty the epiphysis fuses and linear growth comes to a halt in boys as well as in girls. So the control of the height it comes on the epiphysis you remember the epiphysis is the upper part of the the upper spongy part of the bone. So when that part of the bone get fused the growth of the bone stops. So when the growth of the bone stops the height control means height get shortened or you can the height will be uh, halted on that time. So testosterone also promotes uh, muscle building especially if uh, aided by exercise. So that's why because testosterone directly involves in the muscle building that's why the males have a little more muscular than the female. There is a accretion of uh, nitrogen minerals and water body water body weight increases rapidly and more protoplasm is built. So, this is also uh, happening in this way because of the minerals and nitrogen plays their role. Appetite is improved and a sense of well-being prevails. So, testosterone also gives a well-being feeling to the males. Testosterone given to patient prone to salt and water retention may develop edema. A role in erythropoiesis, testosterone also accelerates erythropoiesis by increasing erythropoietin production and probably direct action on heme synthesis. Now here is the answer on that why the males have more amount of blood, why the males have more hemoglobin, why the males have more RBCs and why the males have more WBCs because of the erythropoiesis process is being promoted by testosterone. Now we will see what the mechanism of the testosterone here. Uh, in the skin, prostate, seminal vesicle and epidermis, it is converted to 5-alpha dihydroesterone, dihydroesterone by alpha 5-alpha reductase. So here uh, in these areas, in these uh, organs 5-alpha uh, reductase converts the testosterone into 5-HT. Testosterone and dihydrotestosterone bind to the intracellular androgen receptor. How they act? How they produce their effect? They either testosterone or 5-HT or uh, DHT sorry bind to the androgen receptor AR then leading to a growth differentiation and synthesis of variety of enzyme and other functional proteins. Here the mechanism has been shown, you can see here, SHBG, SHBG means sex hormone binding globulins. So this testosterone has been brought by the SHBG to the cell and there's some directly testosterone can go into the cell and uh, then uh, it binds to the AR that is the uh, androgen receptors or uh, it can uh, convert it by 5-alpha reductase into the DHT and then it binds to the AR. So like that uh, both ways it can uh, do this. 
and you can see after binding to AR there is a complex of the testosterone AR complex and then you from here now you remember uh, from here to here this is the same nuclear receptor mechanism right so it binds with it go for dimerization phosphorylation then internalization then go for DNA binding after that androgen it binds on the androgen response element then it changes into the gene target gene activation and then it performs the growth survival and uh, other biological responses so this is the way uh, the mechanism of uh, this happens so i hope you understood this uh, mechanism well okay so uh, here The testosterone is inactive orally due to high first pass metabolism in liver. Testosterone in circulation is 98 percent bound to sex hormone binding globulin and to albumin. The major metabolic products of testosterone are androesterone and etiocolonolone which are excreted in urine mostly as conjugates with glucuronic acid and sulfate. Now we will see some ADR of the testosterone or these androgens. In women, the administration of more than 200 to 300 milligram of testosterone per month is usually associated with the hirsutism. Hirsutism is the uh, you know hair, uh, hairs coming on the face, it is called hirsutism. You can find in some women lot of uh, facial hairs are there. So these facial hairs are because of the uh, high testosterone level. Acne, amenorrhea, clitoral enlargement and deepening of the voice. Administration of these drugs to pregnant women may lead to masculinization or under masculinization of the external genitalia in the female and male fetus respectively. So this is again a very important point in the if in the pregnancy the testosterone level goes high or drug has been given that time then it will lead to masculinization or uh, under masculinization of the external genitalia of the female and male fetus so that 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 things can be happen. Acne in males and females as I told you frequent uh, sustained and often painful erections in male in the beginning of therapy subsides spontaneously after some time oligospermia with moderate doses given for a few weeks precocious puberty and shortening of stature due to early closure of epiphysis so those who are having a shortens of height that they get very short height so uh, this is called early uh, shortening of uh, the epiphysis right so because of that the stature body stature got shorter it if given to children for more than a few weeks edema as uh, already seen uh, how edema happens especially when large doses are used in patients with heart or kidney diseases it is rare with the dose use of hypo for hypogonadism so uh, in the normal doses used for hypogonadism uh, edema won't be happen but if you give in the higher doses then it will happen Cholestatic jaundice occurs uh, with methyl testosterone and other 17 alkyl substituted derivatives and uh, some anabolic steroids like oxymethylone or estanozolol in a dose dependent manner but not with parentally used esters of testosterone. There are some contraindications. Uh, androgens are contraindicated in carcinoma of prostate and male breast, liver and kidney diseases, and during pregnancy because masculinization of female fetus. The sh they should be used cautiously in patients who may be adversely affected by fluid uh, retention, such as CHF, epilepsy, and migraine. That's why during the pregnancy there are a lot many restrictions of certain drugs, certain kind of food because certain food which can elevate the level of testosterone 
uh, or other androgens and there are certain drugs which can uh, you know modify or modulate the uh, hormone uh, mechanism you know if, uh, from the same mechanism progesterone develops from same mechanism testosterone develops so if there is anything goes wrong any drug which can change those pathway so testosterone start producing more then that kind of fetus will having lot of masculine uh, feature Now we'll see the clinical uses of testosterone here. Androgen replacement therapy, especially the first use of the testosterone is in the androgen replacement therapy in men. Here uh, in these patients, therapy should be started with long acting agents such as testosterone, enantinate or sapionate in doses of 50 milligram intramuscularly initially every four then every three and then finally two weeks every two weeks with each change taking place at three months interval the doses uh, is uh, the dose is the double is then doubled 200 mg every two weeks until maturation is completed so like that the uh, method of uh, dosing can be followed finally it is changed to the adult replacement dose of 200 mg at two weeks interval testosterone and deconate can be given orally administering large amounts of the steroid twice daily around 40 mg per day however this is not recommended because oral testosterone administration has been associated with liver tumors Another use uh, in the case of testicular failure, it may be primary in children resulting in delayed puberty. Treatment with peri, uh, perintral testosterone esters or transdermal. Testosterone or dihydrotestosterone in course of 4 to 6 months at a time is highly satisfactory. Secondary testicular failure occurs later in life manifest mainly as loss of libido and impotence. So, in case of test testicular failure, we are using. Also used in hypopituitarism, right? When the pituitary <laughs> gland itself not producing the enough hormones. AIDS related muscle weakening. Uh, in the, those cases also testosterone can strengthen the muscles again. Aging. Uh, because of the aging uh, testosterone level goes down and lot many uh, testosterone related functions get diminishes so in that case also aging uh, this testosterone therapy can be given gynecological disorders uh, it has been treated uh, androgens have been used to reduce breast enlargement in engorgement during the postpartum period usually in conjunction with the estrogens the weak androgen denazole is used in the treatment of endometriosis. You have heard about the denazole in female sex hormone chapter as well. They have been used for chemotherapy of breast tumors in premenopausal women. Use as protein anabolic agents, uh, androgens and anabolic steroids have been used in conjunction with dietary measures and exercise in an attempt to reverse protein loss after trauma, surgery or prolonged immobilization and in patients with debilitating, debilitating diseases. So what happens, uh, it androgens can strengthen the protein functions. It is also used in case of an anemia, in the past large doses of androgens were employed in the treatment of refractory anemia such as aplastic anemia, Fanconi's anemia, sickle cell anemia, myelofibrosis and hemolytic anemias. Recombinant erythropoietin has largely replaced androgens for this purpose. Also used as the growth stimulators. Androgen now uh, you have seen the uses uh, in which uh, clinical conditions we can use the testosterone and other androgens. Now we will see androgen suppression and anti-androgens. Here we will discuss about the how the androgens can be suppressed 
and what are the drugs which act as an anti-androgens. The treatment of advanced prostatic carcinoma often requires orchectomy or large dose of estrogens to reduce available in, in endogenous androgen. Two methods are there. One, orchectomy or second, large dose of estrogen to reduce available endogenous androgen. You know that by then, if you give the large doses of estrogens, that uh, will go as a negative feedback mechanism and suppresses the endogenous androgen. This is a suppression method, right? but not desirable due to the serious side effects. Uh, superactive GnRH agonists are the most potent inhibitors of gonadal functions. So, these uh, superactive GnRH agonists can be treated as the inhibitor of the gonadal functions. Administered over a few days, they markedly inhibit LH and FSH release resulting in loss of androgen secretion. Another drug, for example, ketoconazole, at high doses inhibits the steroidogenic cytochrome P450 enzymes. Then what happens? Testosterone as well as adrenal steroid production is interfered. Simetidine and spironolactone have weak anti-androgenic action, which manifest as side effects. Progesterone has weak androgen receptor blocking action. So, progesterone can also be given to inhibit these uh, androgen effects. This is uh, the same uh, negative feedback mechanism. Now, we can uh, classify anti androgens here uh, steroid uh, synthesis inhibitors. So, we have some inhibitors which can uh, inhibit these uh, steroids, uh, for example, ketoconazole. Conversion of steroid precursors to androgens. So, inhibitor of 17 hydroxylation of progesterone or progenilorm. So, these, these are very important drugs here. Finasteride, dutasteride, abreteron, right. So, finasteride is the drug which inhibit the conversion of uh, testosterone into DHT. And you know that DHT is uh, responsible uh, for the uh, weakening of hair follicle and making the uh, hair male pattern baldness. So, that is why uh, in the males uh, where the male pattern baldness have been observed, finasteride is the drug. Uh, for treatment uh, for that kind of baldness has been given because finasteride blocks the conversion of testosterone into phi, uh, DHT uh, by blocking this uh, enzyme. Another is the receptor inhibitors. Uh, here we have ciprotyrone and ciprotyrone acetate, lutamide, bicalutamide, nilutamide, spironolactone and danazole. These are the drugs. Now, in the next category, uh, I have chosen to discuss about the denazole because denazole was also there in the female uh, sex hormone chapter as an uh, anti estrogenic drug. So, we will discuss about the denazole here. It is an orally active uh, ethysterone derivative having weak androgenic anabolic and progestational activities. So, what is having a weak androgenic anabolic and progestational activities? It binds to the androgen receptor and induces some androgen specific mRNA production. The most prominent action is suppression of gene secretion from pituitary in both men and women. And then what happens? Inhibition of testicular, uh, testicular one ovarian function. Suppresses gonadal functions directly as well as by inhibiting steroidogenic enzymes. Here we have the uses, certain uses of denazole. It is used in endometriosis. Denazole causes marked improvement in 75 percent cases. Relief of dysmenorrhea is also prompt. Pain, dysperiunia and excessive bleeding regress slowly. Also used in menorrhagia, it reduces menstrual blood loss. Usually complete amenorrhea does not occur with 200 mg per day. Fibrocystic breast disease 
also used in fibrocystic breast disease which is called chronic cystic mastitis. 3 to 6 month treatment cause improvement with decrease in pain nodularity, pain modularity, uh, M is missing here I think and no, it is fine, it is nodularity, no, nodule formation and engorgement in 75 percent cases. So, like that it is used in uh, case of the endometriosis, menorrhagia and fibris, fibrocystic breast diseases. It has some side effects. Uh, for example, uh, complete amenorrhea occurs with higher dose as long as the drug is given. Occasionally, spotting may be seen in some. Androgenic side effects are hirutism, acne, decreased breast size, deepening of voice, edema and weight gain. Loss of libido in men, heart flushes in women and night sweats, muscle cramps, GI upset, elevation of hepatic enzymes are these side effects. So, by this uh, you have uh, seen what is the pharmacology of uh, androgens especially testosterone and uh, the one anti-androgenic drug which is uh, denazole. So, you just go through with some more drugs uh, which may be important for you especially uh, one is finasteride which is very important drug. So, please go through the pharmacology of finasteride, dutasteride, ciprotiron, flutamide and bicalutamide right. These are the references I used. Thank you so much for your honest learning. I hope you understood the chapter well. Thank you.